Hi, I'm Jenna Noor, and today we're going to learn on ECG rhythm recognition. So before we proceed, let's recall on the ECG wave and complex. So we have here the B wave, which reflects the atrial depolarization. And then we also have here the PR interval. This shows atrial depolarization plus a venous delay. And this will be followed by the QRS complex. So QRS complex is very important because it reflects the ventricular depolarization. And then we also have here the T wave, which shows ventricular repolarization. We use long lead 2 as the rhythm strip. This is because lead 2 is looking directly at the heart. And then the cardiac condition system, all the impulses is moving mostly towards the lead 2. So that's why lead 2 is used as the rhythm strip. And then, after that, we look at the QRS complex to determine the rhythm. We need to decide which pacemaker generates the QRS complex. So, these QRS complexes are following which pacemaker. So, why we use QRS complex? It is because the QRS complex reflects the ventricle depolarization, which will cause ventricular contraction. So this ventricular contraction is very important because it is the one determining the cardiac output. So the blood coming out from the heart is determined by the ventricular contraction. Mm -hmm. So that's why the QRS complex is very important. And we can divide the rhythm into sinus rhythm, tachyarrhythmia, bradyarrhythmia or bradycardia, and also a rest rhythm. So this is because during the clinical purpose, we treat the rhythm differently based on the type of the rhythm. To decide the rhythm, first we need to decide whether it is tachycardia or bradycardia. So the normal heart rate is 60 to 100. So tachycardia is when the heart rate is more than 100 and bradycardia is when the heart rate is less than 60. So to estimate whether this is tachy or brady, we need to know whether the rhythm is regular or irregular first. So this is because we need to estimate the heart rate. So now we look at the ECG strip. So is it regular or irregular? We compare the RR interval. So on the first ECG strip, we can see that the RR interval is regular. So we compare from one R to one R and the other R to the other R, it is the same. So we say that this is a regular rhythm. And then we have another ECG strip on the right side, which shows that the RR from the first R to the second R, compared to the second R to the third R, is not the same. So this is irregular rhythm. So what is the rate? So is it tachycardia, bradycardia, or normal? So for regular rhythm, we take 300 divided by the number of big boxes from one R to the other R. While in the irregular rhythm, we count the number of R waves in 30 big boxes and then we times 10. This is because 300 big boxes equal to 1 minute. Because 1 big box equal to 0.2 second. So let's have a look at this ECG strip. So we can see here the RR interval is regular. So the duration from 1 R to 1 R and also from that R to another R is the same. So the R to R length is about two big boxes. So the rate in this rhythm is 300 divided by 2 equals to 150. So in 300 big boxes, we are going to expect to see 150 R's. So this is 150 bits per minute. So let's look at this strip. This, in this strip, the R to R is irregular. So we need to count in 30 big boxes. So in these 30 big boxes, we can see that there are 9 R waves. So in 1 minute, there will be 9 times 10 equals to 90 R waves. So the rate is 90 bits per minute. Now we look at the QRS complex. So is it narrow or broad? So on the left hand side, you can see it is narrow QRS complex. So the normal duration of QRS is about 70 to 100 milliseconds. So it is less than 2.5 small box. If it is more than 2.5 small boxes, it will be considered broad QRS complex, like the diagram on the right hand side. So this is the narrow QRS complex. And this is 
the broad QRS complex. Narrow QRS complex originates from the supraventricular pacemakers. So this include the SA node, the atrial tissue, and also the junctional pacemakers. And these junctional pacemakers include the AV node and also the surrounding area. So these pacemakers will produce narrow QRS complex because the impulse will go to the AV node and will be passed down to the specialized conduction pathway. So these will produce narrow QRS complexes. While broad QRS complex originate from the ventricular pacemakers because the impulse that comes from the ventricular pacemakers will travel through the myocardium. However, not all broad QRS complexes originate from the ventricular. However, sometimes the supraventricular pacemakers can also produce broad QRS complexes, such as in supraventricular rhythm with aberrancy. So in this situation, there is abnormal pathway, like in right bundle branch block, left bundle branch block, in pre-excitation syndrome, or in hyperkalemia, or sodium channel blocker toxicity. So in this situation, there will be broad complexes, even though the impulse generated from the supraventricular pacemakers. So, as a conclusion, all narrow QRS complexes must originate from the supraventricular area. Broad QRS complex usually originates from the ventricular pacemakers, but in certain situations, like in supraventricular rhythm with aberrancy, it can also produce broad QRS complex. Now we look at the P wave. Is the P wave absent or present? So if the P wave is always absent, but the rhythm is narrow complex, then it could be because of atrial fibrillation or junctional rhythm. If the rhythm is broad, it can be because of ventricular rhythm. Now we look at the PR interval. Is it normal, prolonged or shortened? A normal PR interval is about three to five small boxes. A prolonged PR can happen in a delayed conduction of the AV node, such as in AV node disease, electrolyte problems, or myocarditis. While a shortened PR can occur in pre-excitation syndrome, like wolf parkinson white Now we look at the P and QRS relation. Is every P followed by QRS complex? So if there is any P that is not conducted, meaning that there is P but not followed by QRS complex, so we say that the P is not Conducted. This happened in heart block, in which we call it is a misbeat. So now we go to the quick guide to recognize the rhythm. So first, we look whether it is regular or irregular because we need to estimate the rate. So whether this is a tachycardia or bradycardia or a normal heart rate. So for regular rhythm, we estimate by having 300 divided by the RR intervals in big boxes. If it is irregular, then we count the number of R in 30 big boxes, then we times 10, because 300 big boxes equal to 1 minute. And then, we look at the QRS complex. Is it broad? Is it narrow? If it is narrow, then it must be from the supraventricular pacemakers. If it is broad, then it can be because of ventricular rhythm or it can be because of supraventricular rhythm with aberrancy. And then we look at the P wave, whether it is present or not. If it is regular and narrow complex but the P wave is always absent, then it could be because of junctional rhythm. If it is narrow but irregular, then it can be because of atrial fibrillation. If the P wave is not present but the rhythm is narrow and regular, then it can be because of junctional rhythm. If it is irregular and narrow, then it can be because of atrial fibrillation. If the P wave is not present, but the rhythm is broad, it can be because of ventricular rhythm. Now we look at the PR interval, whether it is normal, prolonged, or shortened. And then we look at the P and QRS relationship. Is there any misbeat which can occur in AV block? With that, we conclude our introduction for rhythm recognition.